In this video, I'm going to show you how to find values of trig functions, uh, specifically ones that we can use a reference angle to help us. So the first thing we want to do is define a reference angle. A reference angle is a positive, a positive angle. It's a positive acute angle specifically. And it's always formed by the terminal side. And it's always formed by the x-axis. So these are always uh, the three key points that you need to keep in mind when trying to find a reference angle to use. It has to be a positive angle. Um, it has to be an acute angle. And it's always going to be formed uh, between the terminal side and the x-axis. And the terminal side is going to be the terminal side of the angle that uh, you are asked to find the value of. Um, so keep those three things in mind and I'll try and show you some examples here and then we'll do some examples of values of trig functions. So we're gonna sketch angles throughout this video. They don't have to be super accurate um, <clears throat> let's say that we had an angle there. So our terminal side is the x-axis. I mean, our initial side, my apologies. Our initial side is the x-axis. This is our terminal side. So this would be considered a reference angle. And reference angles are usually defined with this symbol. It's like an, uh, it's like an original angle, theta, uh, but it's got this apostrophe next to it. So it's also known as a theta prime, or a reference angle symbol. So in the first quadrant, uh, usually, if you're given an angle, you don't need to find a reference angle, because the reference angle is the original angle. There's no need to do the steps that we're about to do. But if we draw an angle whose terminal side lies in the second quadrant. So if we draw an angle like that, now all of a sudden this is our original angle and this is our reference angle. And the reference angle is the acute angle formed by the x-axis in the terminal side. And it's always going to be a positive value. So it doesn't matter what quadrant it's in, we're always going to refer to it as a positive value. So that's what a reference angle in the second quadrant would look like. If we draw one in the third quadrant, some angle that's formed like that, this would be our original angle. And so the reference angle would not be here. It would be between the terminal side and the x-axis. So this would be our reference angle. And one more time, in the fourth quadrant, It'll look something like this. So if this was our original angle, then our reference angle would be right here in between the x-axis and the terminal side. And it doesn't matter what quadrant it's in, it's always going to be a positive value. Right. So the usual mistakes that are made is that you know somebody wants to call this the reference angle. That's not between the x-axis and the terminal side. That would be the y-axis, so that's not it. So just always remember it's between the x-axis in the terminal side. Alright, so let's evaluate some trig functions here. Let's say that we're given an angle of 120 degrees. So anytime you have to evaluate a trig function, let's say, oh, I don't know, let's say we're trying to find the cosine of 120 degrees first step you want to do is find your reference angle. Reference angle. So if we sketch our angle out, 120 degrees is, I don't know, approximately there. That would be the sketch of 120 degrees. So our reference angle would be over on this side, between the terminal side and the x-axis. And the reference angle value would be whatever this measurement is. So if we know that we need a total of 180 to go all the way, then it would be the difference. 180 minus 120 would give us this little value. 
So we know we're missing 60 degrees. That's our reference angle. So we found the reference angle value. The second step is to find the value of your reference angle. And if you watch the last few videos that I've been making about uh, the unit circle, I referred to a reference angle. And uh, we talked about how uh, this measurement, if we evaluate that any trig function for this angle measurement, it's going to be the exact same as if we were to evaluate an angle measurement of the reference angle. So that's why we use reference angles. They are generally angles that we know the values of from a unit circle, and they're a little bit easier to come up with the values inside our own head. So then the third step, which we'll get to in a second, is to determine the sign. So we'll get there in a second. So let's find the value of our ref reference angle. So instead of the cosine of 120 degrees, we can think of the same thing just in terms of the cosine of 60 degrees instead. And again, if you watch the last few videos, the cosine of 60 degrees is the x value given a 60 degree angle. And the x value of a 60 degree angle is 1 half. And so the last step, this is almost our answer here, the last step is to figure out the sign, and that is always determined by what quadrant. So we know we're looking for uh, an angle that's in quadrant 2. Our x values are going to be negative, and our y values are going to be positive. Should have done it like that. And so since we evaluated the cosine, we evaluated an x value so we should be looking at a negative value there so the cosine of 120 degrees is the same as negative one half so let's do another example follow these same three steps uh, we'll get a little bit more complicated as we go but those three steps should help you get there regardless Let's try and evaluate, um, let's see, let's see, we'll do the cosine again of negative 150 degrees. So we can do the same thing with negative angles. First thing you want to do is sketch your angle out and find that reference angle. So this time we're drawing a negative angle, we're going to go clockwise here. So it's going to be somewhere over here not quite 180 degrees so we're going to end up in quadrant 3 and this is going to be our reference angle so if our original angle was 150 degrees negative 150 degrees then what we're missing here is our reference angle so we're missing 30 degrees and again that reference angle is always going to be a positive value so even though this was negative 150 a reference angle we always say is positive, so it's going to be positive 30 degrees. So the second step is to evaluate the trig function of the reference angle. So we're trying to think of the cosine of 30 degrees, that's the x value given a 30 degree angle measurement. The x value of a 30 degree angle measurement is the square root of 3 over 2. And so the last step is just to figure out whether it's a positive or negative based on what quadrant it's in. Since we're in the third quadrant, our x values are negative, our y values are negative. So since we found the cosine, which is an x value, we want to make this value negative. And that's our final answer. All right, let's do some more. This time we're going to do it in terms of radians, and you can follow the same steps. The only thing you want to be sure of is if you're given a, a question or a problem in terms of degrees, you want to give your answer in terms of degrees. If you have a question that's given to you in terms of radians, you always want to give your answer in terms of radians. You're allowed to switch it around however you like to work with it, but I would encourage you to get better um, at and evaluating things in terms of radians uh, rather than having to switch back and forth. 
So this time, let's try and find the cosecant. So a little bit trickier this time. Of 11 pi fourths, or 11 fourths pi. So first step, sketch out your angle. Try and figure out what type of angle 11 fourths pi is. One trick that I like to do is to break it up um, in terms of half pies or whole pies. Just kind of work my way around the circle so that I know uh, how I can just sketch it really easily. So 11 pi over 4, 11 fourths pi. How many fourths is 11? Well, we know we got 1 fourth, that's 1 pi. Uh, if we had 8 fourths, that would be 2 pi. And then we have another 3 fourths left over after that. So this kind of guides me into sketching my way around the circle. So I know I have a 1 pi, counterclockwise, positive angle. Now I have another full pi, so I made my way fully around the circle. And now I need to draw another 3 fourths pi. Well, that's more than a half, so I'm somewhere over in this quadrant now. And I know in order to get this full pi here, I would need another quarter pi. So I know my reference angle is 1 fourth pi or pi over 4. So I'm trying to find the cosecant of pi over 4. If we think about our values, our x and y values for fourths, we're always looking for a square root of 2 over 2. That would be the 45 degrees or 1 fourth uh, periodic increments around our circle. Um, but we've got another step here because now we're looking at reciprocal functions. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So if I just find the reciprocal of this, that would be 2 over the square root of 2. And now I can't leave it like that. i got to rationalize. Get that radical out of the bottom. So I can reduce for my final step here, reduce this little fraction, and I just end up with the square root of 2. So there's the cosecant, and now I just have to figure out what sign I have based on the fact that I'm in quadrant 2. Quadrant 2 has negative x values and positive y values. And cosecant is the reciprocal of a y value. Well, the reciprocal of a positive y value is going to stay positive, so I just keep it positive, and my final answer is the square root of 2. All right, so hopefully those three steps um, help you to evaluate simple little uh, trig expressions like these. As long as they are in increments of 30, 60, 45 degrees, or your quadrantal angles, you'll be able to use this little trick called reference angles to help you evaluate. So good luck uh, finding the values of some simple trig expressions.